The U.S. House of Representatives passes $60 billion plus in bills. I'll give you the de details on that. Also, Russian President Vladimir Putin has a stark warning for the United States. Details on that here in this video as well. Also, Israel launches a supersonic rampage missile. And... Uh, <laughs> Is this the start of World War III? All the details on all of this and more in this video. Let's jump right in. Thank you so much for smashing the like button for us. Here we go. Okay, so the U.S. House of Representatives passes over $60 billion of aid, which includes, it's not just money. This will be military equipment, weapons, all sorts of things. The House passes four bills to provide aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, along with a measure to force TikTok, TikTok parent company ByteDance, to sell the app so it will not be owned by a Chinese company because if a Chinese company owns TikTok, which over 100 million Americans use, China can control the data and see information on Americans. So over 100 million Americans use the data or use the, the, the app, and uh, it's a security risk, and it's a serious problem, at least a lot of people think so. And um, Congress is doing something about it, as you can see. These four bills now head to the Senate, where they will need 60 votes as well, which requires Republicans and Democrats to pass this in the Senate. This bill, or these bills, were passed with Republican and Democratic support. It passed 311 yeses to 112 noes in the House of Representatives, which is a considered a supermajority, both Republicans and Democrats passing it in the House, Republican Speaker Mike Johnson was the one to bring it to the floor. He's the Republican Speaker. I uh, wouldn't even have been able to go to the floor without his support. There are some hardliner right Republicans that were against this that said, no, those are the ones that don't want to uh, spend typically spend money at all for stuff like this. Remember, there's a bill that goes to, you know, uh, support Ukraine and is typically, you know, fighting against Putin. There's a bill that goes to supporting Israel and fighting against Hamas. There is a bill that goes to supporting um, Taiwan and is fighting against China. So you got to think that all three of these are technically, and have been for a long time, foes against the United States. And indirectly, the United States doesn't actually have to put any boots on the ground. But you also could argue that the United States should stay out of these at all. But especially in with Ukraine and Israel... You know, they need some help. You know, Ukraine is being invaded by Putin. Um, you know, they have nuclear weapons. And, you know, with Taiwan as well, um, China's watching to see what happens. And if Putin is allowed to just take over Ukraine like they did with Crimea, China might be the next country to just say, well, we'll just take over Taiwan. Remember, the U.S. has the U.S.-Taiwan Relations Act with Taiwan that it depends on how you determine it, but it basically says that the U.S. has to support Taiwan. And um, President Biden has said that they would actually put boots on the ground U.S. boots on the ground if they were invaded by China, which has over, um, let me think here, a billion people, which is four times the amount of people 
that the United States has. So we don't want to hope that it comes to that, which is why deterrence would be the better strategy. You guys can let me know your thoughts here on this. So we want to hope that that type of war doesn't even happen. World War III, as a much bigger thing, deterrence is a much better solution than, you know, these adversaries, these foes like China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran just doing what they will, which is what Russia and really Iran and what's happening in the Middle East. Remember, the United States has been attacked 200 plus times in the in the Middle East, and the U.S. has not really responded very well and has gotten a lot of criticism. So you guys can let me know your thoughts on this. All of this, everybody has a lot of different opinions on this, and um, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments. Because, you know, you put 10 different presidents in there and you probably get 10 different responses. And uh, it's really a tough situation. How do you deal with Iran? How do you deal with Russia? How do you deal with North Korea? And how do you deal with the Goliath in the room, China, with over a billion people? Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin is not very happy about aid being passed for Ukraine. He wants to just go in there and take over the country take all the resources, take their people, and add them to his army, which he's already doing in the areas he has captured. He's literally taking the Ukrainians and drafting them into his army. Imagine if you lived there and this was you. Russia says deeper, Russia and Vladimir Putin, says deeper U.S. hybrid war using Ukraine will end in Vietnam-style humiliation. Now, I'm not sure about that. As of right now, I think things haven't gone for as planned for Vladimir Putin. I think he thought he was just going to waltz in there and in a few weeks take over Ukraine. Maybe they were going to even just lay down their arms like Crimea did. And things have not gone as planned. Basically, most of the world and Europe and the United States have fought against them, mostly through helping Ukraine, Vladimir Putin has not emerged as the victor because, well, they're still fighting two years later. So, guess we will see. And Israel responding back to Iran with a half-ton supersonic rampage missile. Remember, Iran, which is being funded by Russia and Vladimir Putin, and both of them extremely close allies. A lot of people think that, and I actually kind of think this as well, that Russia may have actually funded and started the war there with uh, Hamas, Iran, and that whole Middle Eastern situation to actually take the eye off of the Ukrainian situation war there. And uh, this is why Vladimir Putin is probably just steaming right now that more funding went into uh, stopping him in Ukraine. Uh, this was probably his worst nightmare that that actually happened. And now Israel and the whole second war involved there, this is why a lot of people think that this whole thing is evolving into a war world war three type of situation. Two wars evolving into a larger world war. Israel used a long-range supersonic missile in its strike on Iran earlier this week. According to Israel broadcaster Khan reported per the Times of Israel, U.S. official says Israel carried out a missile strike on a military base near the city of Isfahan, Iran, over the weekend. Israel has not confirmed the reports, while Iran has sought to downplay the incident, only referencing small drones used during the, the attack, which is foreign minister said were like toys or children's play with. Well, apparently not. The Rampage missile was designed by Israel Aerospace Industries for use against targets such as communication and command centers 
Air Force bases, maintenance centers, and infrastructures, according to the company's website. It weighs 1,250 pounds and is a long-range air-to-ground seekerless precision strike weapon. And these supersonic missiles start to get a little concerning because you got to think Russia has used these as well. What might be the next step above that? Or what might be the next step in general? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for liking. Share these videos with anybody that needs to hear this information. If you haven't yet, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos. Click the bell icon after subscribing so you get notifications when new videos come out here at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click here to watch my newest video next. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.